So are we living in a new police state era? Bishop Patrick Wooden exposes the tactics and spirit behind cancel culture. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying Table Talk. Also remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. Well, we've seen it time and time again, a person rejected and even shamed by society, oftentimes over disapproved words. So are we seeing the death of free speech? And what future are we heading towards with, yes, cancel culture? We've all heard about it. Well, today, with the help of our special guests, we're going to find out. But first joining me on the table is my beautiful daughter in love, Susanna. <laughs> How Thank are you? you? I'm great now that I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I knew you would love the show today because we have someone who is uh, who is strong and courageous and will stand up for truth. Yeah. Yes. Don't you love that? I love a when strong man. When you find in the body of Christ. <laughs> yes. A strong leader because, you know, the, the society is trying to weaken men, but yeah. then we have strong men who stand up. And yeah. I love it. All right. Anna Kendall, how are you? I'm just so glad to be here. And I love any time we talk about character and culture. Yes. That's what we're going to talk about. Yes. And, and God you're is... just like a little piece of sunshine Woo! today. Oh, I mean, I, I looked over there and I had to get my sunglasses. <laughs> it's so bright. Oh, like the morning dear. sun. But you do that, don't you? I do. You do light up a room. You still oh, do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's so good to have you. Thank you. Kendra Kelly Dean, how Hi. are you? I'm good. Sitting over here next to the sunshine. Right. I yeah. know. It's just, it's like, <laughs> No, I'm good. I'm doing good. I, I am excited to do this show. Yeah. I don't know that we've talked about this particular before, but I'm... Oh, yeah. We need to talk about it. It's important. We do. And Christians need to stand up and talk out loud about what they believe and what righteous character looks like. Yes. That's right. There's and you do it, you may be canceled. I yes. don't care. There you go. There you go. Uh, yes. I respond to him, and I'm obedient to there him first. There you go. Yes. I love it. Yes. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm doing really good. I'm excited about the show. I know it's going to be good. Well, he is the pastor of Upper Room Church of God in Christ and has been in ministry for over 35 years, and he is a vocal challenger to tactics we see being used in our society. Please welcome our dear friend, Bishop Patrick Wooden. Woo. Yay! Yes. Come on out here, Bishop. How's everybody? Hey. Hello. <laughs> Glad to be here. Good to have so good you. to have you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm All right. Excited about being here. Yay. Well, it's Joni, good. thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here, Bishop. Yeah. You know, uh, what is cancel culture? Does the Bible support it? Is it healthy for society? And perhaps most importantly, what spirit is behind it? Well, today, Bishop Wooden is here to help us answer these questions and more. So let's just start out with, we're going to talk about your book, um, Building Faith and Perfecting character, but uh, this, these two words, cancel culture, we have seen it over and over and over again. I mean, they have canceled me on certain subjects. They have decided that um, it was not appropriate content, even though we're in America and we should right. have freedom to speak mm -hmm. and say what we want to say. Amen. Amen. Uh, it is... Um, it's been, there's a revival of it. Um, you know, they tried to cancel Peter and John. They told them mm -hmm. not to preach anymore in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. They tried to silence Nehemiah. They tried to silence uh, the, as a matter of fact, they, they stopped the construction of the temple for over 16 years. I, I went through a cancel culture before uh, it became popular <laughs> as it is now Tell again. Tell us about that. Um, it was back in the 2014, 2015, when uh, President Obama was the president, and uh, I, I did something simple. I just disagreed with him uh, on the definition of marriage. I believe that the, the definition that God gave us is the same. It's, it, it shouldn't be changed. Yeah. It is a union between a man and a woman, and I believe it today. And he started with that definition yes. early on. He yes. said that he believed it to be between yeah. a man and a woman, and then he pivoted. Evolved over, over the years, you know, yeah. and, and there, there's evidence that that, that wasn't so. From day one, he was for that, but they were concerned that if he came out with that, um, that the community wouldn't follow him. Um, mm. I had uh, 25 preachers to call a press conference in Raleigh to uh, denounce me 
And uh, and they said the problem with Wooden is that he doesn't understand that you uh, you have to separate your politics from from the from the scripture. And I was I was in a, under the impression that you didn't separate anything from scripture. Yes, exactly. But they went to the bank, the bank that that had our loan on our building at the time, and thank God we paid it off and canceled. We we canceled it. We we paid it off. <laughs> Good. But they went to him and said, call the loan. Now, I got this. Wow, can y'all believe this? I can't believe it. Yeah. No. I, I got this from the banker. Wow. The banker told me. Wow. He said, call the loan. And, um, and they said that would definitely put him out of business. Because yes. had he called wow. the loan at the time, we couldn't have paid that. Right. And thank God that he refused to do so, but they did that to try to silence me. Wow. And, uh, and the thing about it, you know, this cancer culture doesn't know anything about race or, or, or gender and all that, because the people who went uh, to him, all of them looked like me. Mm -hmm. And my crime was not that I had been caught with a live boy or a dead girl or I've done anything Ill immoral. I just stayed with God wow. yes. on the definition of marriage. Oh. And, and those who were a part of that, many of them, they uh, uh, got fired from their churches. Wow. wow. Some uh, uh, had some pretty bad things to come their way. I was, I was told about one the other day who, who had gotten arrested and different things. And what happened to me, on the other hand, is I got promoted, yeah. and the Lord yeah. blessed. So yeah. um, we got elevated, and I, and I thank the Lord for yeah. it. But um, the world isn't playing. They they are they they hate us, and they are afraid of the message. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. It makes me so frustrated because I see. I mean, we're not allowed to talk about godly character because if we do, they're offended. Mm. You know. However, I can sit down and just try to watch a kid's show with my child, right. and when the commercials come on, right. I mean, they're talking about homosexuality mm -hmm. and drugs to take to mm -hmm. prevent from getting diseases and things like that, and my children are in the room. and but So they can do that on a platform, but we can't. What kind of um, values do you think that they are trying to cancel right now in Christianity and trying to keep us silent during this whole process? Well, it is it is perversion mm -hmm. on on, so on the true. march. It is and Romans one. It is, it is. Romans one, on almost on steroids. They really want so to, true. they want to come after the most vulnerable. Our kids, their brains right. are developing. The human yes. brain doesn't stop developing until you're between 18 and 21. So with our children, mm -hmm. children's brains are developing, and if they can get put this in them at a very early age, if you could convince the little boy mm -hmm. that he may actually, you know, there's a possibility yeah. oh, that yes. you may be a girl. Right. Yes. And, the, and the girl mm -hmm. that early on, now some of those teachers, they move on. Some of those people get jobs at other places, making more money, but they've sowed that seed right. in that child. Yes, yeah. exactly. That will be with them for the rest of their days. And children notice it. Because yes. even my daughter, yes. she was seven then, and mm -hmm. she said, Mom, did he just say that mm -hmm. he was married to a man? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they hear yeah, that, yeah. and they're aware yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just had a, a woman uh, in her 50s say to me today, she said, I thank God that my mama let me have my tomboy years and that she didn't march me off and turn me into a boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because oh, I had Cindy, those little years. I agree with that. If our parents had been the way some yeah. of them are today, we would have been mm -hmm. changed already. Mm -hmm. I want to say this to those of you that are watching right now, is that we love everyone, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And you love everyone. Yes, yes. And everyone's welcome at your church. Yes. And I bet oh, yeah. you have some incredible testimonies mm -hmm. of people that have come from diverse lifestyles and different backgrounds, and God has done an incredible work in yes, their lives. So when we talk about these things, don't get all agitated and think, oh, well, look, if we really love you, yes. if we really love you, speak then truth. we're going to speak the truth Yes. Concerning what God's word has to say about these topics that we're talking yes. about. And somebody said the other day, well, you shouldn't talk about politics. Well, see, politics make policies. Yes. Right. right. And policies affect people. 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 That's right. Yes. And I'm concerned right. about yeah. people. So, yes, of course, we should be involved. Of course. Uh, Senator Langford said that uh, of the 39 books in the Old Testament, 37 of the 39 are written about to or they concern the actions of some political figure, That's true. kings and leaders. That's so uh, we can't divorce ourselves mm -hmm. from what takes place in politics because the laws that they make, we got to live with them, and we're to be present. We're, we're, the, we're not the light of heaven. 
We're not the salt of heaven. We're the light of the world mm -hmm. and the salt of the earth. Yes, so our battle, we're to make a difference here. Yeah. yeah. Right. We're to, the light is to heaven shine doesn't here. need us. No. He's the light up there. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Tell us a little bit about you personally. How did you not get pulled into, or could you, I should just say, could mm -hmm. you have gotten pulled into the victim mentality and hatred and bitterness and unforgiveness? Right. Mm -hmm. Victim mentality is deadly. Number one, my mama didn't allow that. No, <laughs> you she know, didn't. we we were raised uh, by our mom, um, uh, four of us, four brothers, and uh, wow, we were, four boys, four boys, four boys, <laughs> wow. four boys. Where were you Bless in the lineup? <laughs> Bless her, the heart. oldest, the oldest. Okay. So uh, that, that put a lot of responsibility on yeah. me, and I thank yeah. God that my mom is still with us. Uh, she told oh, me the other great. day. She said, "Son, you always telling people my age." So, mom, I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> not gonna do that today, okay. but um, she didn't. Um, uh, uh, we didn't have time for that uh, of being victims. Even though we were poor, we didn't know we were poor. And I'm gonna say this now. I, I may get a, you may get a lot of flack for this, but a lot of this victim mentality stuff is a sham it's because true. when when we're amongst ourselves, most black people that I know of that I've grown up with, uh, we don't think we don't talk like that publicly. Uh, we're not sitting around crying and talking about how horrible things are. Most, uh, if you were born in America, regardless of your color, you won life's lottery yeah. just by exactly. being born here. Yes. Because the, the potential is so great. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why people risk their lives and everything else to get into the country. Mm -hmm. But it's popular now. Yes. It's, you, 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 you're woke if you are a victim mm -hmm. and if you're angry. You know, they even teach, yeah. in, in teaching wokeness, they teach that you gotta be angry. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you gotta start with that, even though you may not know why you're angry. Um, and you, you've got to rebel. You got to, you got to, you got to sound like a yeah. victim. When. Um, but did you experience racism growing up? At yeah, that point? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I, how did you handle that? How did you get past it? Every time someone white did something that was just atrocious, that made me want to knock them out. Someone else white would come along who didn't know them and uh, unrelated, told them to do something so nice that it make me want to cry. So, <laughs> you know, pe it's people. Right. Th there, there are, there are, there are good and bad people of every strike. That's so and uh, I tried, I tried, I tried that being angry thing. Uh, when I, <laughs> I heard someone say one time, if you're an African American male and you're not angry, uh, you're not, uh, you're not thinking, you're not with it. So I said, okay, I got to be angry. So <laughs> I, I how, old, how old were you when you decided to be angry? Uh, 17, 18, okay, okay. okay. so okay. I, I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be mad, right? And so <laughs> I got, I, and, and mind you, I, I gave my heart to the Lord when I was 16. So when I heard this, so I, I hear this militant say, this militant style of Christianity. So I tried that. So you go into the store and there, there's someone whose color is not the same as, my, as mine. So you, you stiffen up. And after two or three days, I said, man, this is for the birds. I mean, that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of energy. I guess, see, because I would forget to be mad. Yeah. It takes too much energy. It just took too much. It just wasn't in the, your the character. Wait, the waitress, the P, everybody's being nice. And so I got to, you know, put, put on this front. And I said, no, 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 no. I, I'm going to take each person God. as they yeah. come and, and then love people mm -hmm. with the love of the Lord. It, it, it takes, it's too much energy. Um, right. there's, there's too many other people in the world who are kind, who are good, yes. Yes. Who, will, will, who will help you. It's like the fallacy they say about pro-life people. Mm. Uh, they say that pro-life people are concerned about uh, saving the baby, but once the, the lady decides to save the baby, pro-life people disappear. Not true. The most generous people on That's earth yeah. are pro-life people. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The I people agree. who yeah. are there yes. are pro-life. As a matter of fact, many times when mothers at the clinic decide not to hear us and to, and to have the abortion, when they come out crying, mm. when they come out mm. bleeding, when they come out hurting, yes. you know who's there for them? Yeah. We are. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're stunned. You meet arms that embrace you, mm -hmm. and they say, well, you were the same people who were yelling at me as, as I was going in. Well, we were trying to save the baby. But now that you, mm -hmm. you, you've had the abortion, you're still for whom Christ died. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. weren't mad at you. We, want to save we were just you. trying to save the baby. Yes. So now we want to win you. Yeah, and, and, you. Yeah, and, that, and that, if you do decide to have the baby, 
And if you're watching right now and you're yeah. pregnant, you don't know what you're going to do and you don't know what to do and you've been thinking about abortion, you can call us yes. and we will oh, yeah. help you find a home Amen. and people that can help you Amen. and we'll help you with the doctor's appointments, help you have Amen. that baby, whether you want to keep the baby or give it up for adoption. Amen. There are options. You're Amen. not yes. alone. We want to help you through the whole process, not just preach mm -hmm. abortion is wrong. Right. And I think that that's just a... A, a stereotype they have made us seem to be, mm -hmm. but we're not. Mm -hmm. There's so much more. Mm -hmm. uh, how am I gonna? How am I going to be angry with people based on their color when one of the nicest men who ever, uh, one of the great influences of my life was a guy named Hal Stewart. He was my football coach. As a matter of fact, Coach Stewart attends our church now. Oh, and uh, awesome. and Coach Stewart, I mean, he was just, Coach Stewart just spit fire. He's just a mean guy. But Coach Stewart loved me. And and, and Coach Stewart actually, uh, he was fired because Coach Stewart would play the best players. And so that was the racism there. But here's this man. And, uh, and we formed a relationship. And I'll never forget, quick little story. We had beat a, 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 an opponent, and they, they, they was feeding us. And coach said, make sure that you thank them for the food. And I, and I spoke under my voice. I said, for what? The food was lousy. He said, for what? And he heard me. Wouldn't. I'll see you Monday. He gave me 100 breakdowns. By the time I got up off the ground, <laughs> I could hardly stand up. But it was, one of the, it was one of the greatest lessons of my life. Wow. And no one can tell me to this day that Hal Stewart doesn't love me. And guess what? He's going to be uh, inducted this year into the High School Coaches Hall of Fame. Awesome. And he asked me if I would be one of the ones to give a speech for him. Oh, and, that's and, so and sweet. I, I, and I'm, it's, it's such an honor. Mm. Uh, and, and he's as white as they come. You see? <laughs> you know, so, you know, so God you... gave me white Hal Stewart, and right. then my pastor, the late James Henry Turner, mm. who preached me out of my sin, wow. who loved Jesus Christ, and he loved me like mm. a son. I don't know if the two men ever met each other. Yeah. But here's this, this black man, here's this white man, and, and both being showed me great love, and then I got a chance to see my dad twice, and that, that was a blessing. So how do you, experiencing love like this from yeah. people, how do you now buy into this thing yeah. where you're going to just hate people? Mm. All of them, yeah. Yes. Right. I, I will become just like the Nazis. Mm -hmm. I, I've said from the pulpit, we're becoming what we preached against. The white supremacists assumed that they were superior based on color. Mm -hmm. So now with the, the woke movement and these things that are going on, we're saying that we should now, the cure to past racism right. is current racism. Right. So we should hate based right. on color. That's right. We're, we're becoming what we preach against. We're yes. becoming what we loathe. That's right. Well, I can't do that. Yeah. Mm -mm. That's so good. That is great. What I started to say was that if you started getting this revelation when you were 17, after three days of being anger, angry, you have a lot of wisdom, and you had wisdom at a young age. Yeah. Thank yes. God. Uh, I, I, when I would see people with better homes, uh, uh, better communities, just better, doing better, the thing that I... And I don't know why I thought this way. Uh, looking back, it was the Lord. I wanted to know. I didn't want what they have. Mm. I didn't want his house. I didn't want his car. Right. I just want to know. What do you know that I don't know? Right. How right. did you? How did you do that? <laughs> what can See, I learn? Because I, I feel like if I can learn from you, yes. Yes. I can do this. There you go. Turns out I was right. <laughs> yes. I learned and I did. That's yes. awesome. Yes. That's yeah. so good. You know, Susie, character is something that you and I have talked a lot yes. about. It's really important to you. Yeah. You know, so obviously, as I look at what's going on in America, I see it's very obvious. Obviously, what the Bible tells us to do is power and unity. United prayers in the body of Christ, whatever the color may be, unity. Of course, the, the opposite, the world will put us in boxes. I'm in a brown box. You're in a black box. There's a white box. Mm -hmm. So that's how they divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one thing that actually really fires me up because that's how they keep us low and suppressed because my identity is not in being brown. Your identity is not in being black. Right. It's in being a child of God. Amen. It's, and, I, and we are more than conquerors in Christ. Amen. So why do you think that there's a big portion of the body of Christ that still goes by... The, the, the box of colors instead of seeing that we belong to God and not of this world. It's much easier mm. uh, to explain your lack of progress or to hold on to hate 
if you follow these these doctrines. This this is rooted in uh, the politics of, uh, of of separatism. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democrat Party stays in power, dividing people on the basis of race, mm -hmm. complexion, gender, yeah. skin color, and many of these parties have made their way into churches. So you hear it even in the, in their preaching. It's the same thing that the, again, it's the same thing that the white supremacists did. And it was wrong then. And, and even then, I said then, that the preacher who's got to speak out against this is the preacher who would be most affected by it if he speaks out against it. And he will be rewarded if he says nothing. And that is the white preacher. Mm -hmm. So you got to talk about this white supremacist. Yeah. You got to talk about how wrong that is. Yeah. So now here we are now, we've come full circle. And so now we, we see the woke movement and all that, and everything is based on color, gender, and all, all these things to weaken people and, and to cause whole churches, in many cases, to deny Christ, to put up in their foyer on the church lawn, Black Lives yes. Matter. Yes. Now, yes. Uh, an organization that doesn't love Jesus, mm -hmm. that's as wicked as can be, mm -hmm. but people are, are susceptible to it because it excuses them. And it's a way, it's, it's, it's get evenism, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Uh, um, it, it, it's a, it, it appeals to the baser nature of people. Yeah. If I can get revenge, if I can be made to feel better uh, than someone else, mm -hmm. even though I may not be doing as good, or it's easier for me to blame someone else for my lack of progress, then people take the, the easy way out. Adam did it. Mm -hmm. You know, God says, Adam, Adam, where art thou? And he, and he, he answers and he says, so who told you you were naked? So that woman you gave me. Now here's the that first woman man. woman you gave me. Yeah. So blame Blaming God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you yeah. know so we, we see it. And so humans are doing this quite a bit. Yes. And, uh, and they're falling into a, a, a trap. We just have a few minutes left, but talk about perfecting character. Just uh, talk about it. Oh, well. Why is it so important? Uh, thank God we're saved by grace. We all are grateful for that. Thank God for his mercy. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't make it without it. But to emphasize grace and mercy and de-emphasize character, integrity, right. walking it out, living yeah. it out. You know, yeah. We're taught that each man must learn how to possess his uh, vessel in sanctification and honor uh, is to miss a major part of God's truth. Yes. When King Hezekiah got the word from the prophet Isaiah that he was going to die, when he could offer God nothing else, he offered God his character. Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, I have walked before you in, in, in perfection, in, in, in righteousness. And the Lord did disagree with him. God spoke to the same messenger who told him that he was going to die, Isaiah, and said, go back and tell him I've heard his prayers, I've seen his tears, and I'm adding to him 15 more years. Now that moved God. Yes. If we seek to represent him and allow him to enter into our hearts and change our behavior. It's going to give us favor with God, yes. but it also gives us strength and influence with people. Yes. Yes. When my mother got saved, when my mother gave her heart to the Lord, I never, me and my brothers, we never seen anything like it before. <laughs> Mom changed. I mean, it, the music changed, the, the beverages changed, the, the company changed. And you know what? She never changed. She never went back That's to awesome. that. Praise wow. God. It's one thing to say mm -hmm. that God has done. It's another thing to live it out yes. in front of people. Speak to leaders today um, and just encourage them on perfecting character. How important is it in this season to make right decisions and to live in a godly way that's pleasing to the Lord. Yes. Pastors, we will fail God if we don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, it has to start with us. Yes. Bible teaches judgment was, will begin at the house of God. Mm -hmm. As leaders, uh, we, we are in a position, we actually tell people that we speak for God. We actually tell people that the Lord speaks to us. We actually promote um, uh, morality. We tell people how to live. It's devastating when the promoters of a, of a standard, promoters of a lifestyle, those who actually have the audacity to say that you speak for God, 
it's devastating when we fall beneath the standard and we lead people astray. And then many, in many cases, we lead people to believe that it's somehow all right to do this. I want to say to every pastor out there, regards to what your struggles of, may be, the God of the Bible is a deliverer. He's a keeper. He's able. And let us allow the people to see God's delivering power and his keeping power in us. It's one thing to preach a sermon, but it's much more powerful to demonstrate one. Mm. So I pray that all men of God and women of God and leaders out there understand that people are watching us. Mm. And we've done much damage to the message. We talk about, you know, same-sex marriage and all that. Nobody's done damage uh, the institution of marriage like Christians whose marriage failed. You see, so there's a there's a lot of responsibility that are placed on us. So let's let's yes. put this in. It's so important yes. to have this as part of your message. Oh, that's so good. There are people and ministers watching that you say, "Well, I've made a mistake," or, "Hey, you know, we can deal with that." Amen. God can deal Amen. with that all day oh, long. Yes. yes. But I'm talking about leaders who continue in a lifestyle, right. continue making decisions that affect not only their family and people around them, mm -hmm. but so many others in the body of Christ. Amen. We're going to be held accountable yes. for that. So yes. if, you're, if, you, if you fell down, get back up and say, Amen. God, help Amen. me. Amen. He is our deliverer. Yes, he is. I want you to be encouraged today with that word. Well, we are out of time. I want you to remember there's nothing more important and speaking the truth in love, and that no one is beyond the redemptive power of Christ. Amen. It's so imperative that the body of Christ not bow to fear, but that we stand for truth and speak to issues that are having such a detrimental impact and are violating, violating the Word of God. We have to be bold enough to stand up and have courage uh, to not be afraid to speak about those things and to tell people the truth. If we really love people, uh, we will do so. I'm going to continue doing so. I know Bishop Wood and all Amen. the ladies around the table, we're going to Amen. keep speaking the truth. Yes. If you've experienced uh, timidity in, in speaking the truth or you're afraid of uh, being canceled, you just, you're fearful about that, I want you to know that God can help you with that as well. He can give you courage. And uh, that's why we have that toll-free number on the screen. Maybe you say, well, you know, I just don't, I don't know, Joni. I just, I find myself maybe not wanting to say something. But I, I want to tell you something. So many times the Holy Spirit will give you an open door and a conversation with someone that you're close to, someone you're in the grocery store talking to, or your neighbor, or your friend, or your family member. And, and so many times we are reticent and we just hold back when the Holy Spirit is saying, and go and, and share what you know that I can do for this individual. And don't be afraid to speak the truth. I remember I had a dear friend who told her mother that she was a lesbian. And uh, her mother looked at her and said, Honey, I love you, but God didn't create you to be a lesbian. And, um, but I'm going to love you anyway. And she said it made her so mad. <laughs> she ran out of the house, but she said years later, it would be those words mm. that would bring her back to the Lord Hallelujah. because her mother loved her enough to speak the truth and say, You know what? I know that you feel that way right now, but I just want to tell you the truth. God did not right. create you to be a lesbian. Today she's free, Glory. she's married, Glory. and doing great, but it was a process. Mm -hmm. So parents don't give up on those kids, but don't be afraid to speak the truth in love. Well, I hope you've enjoyed hearing from Bishop today. For more on his ministry, you can visit him online at upperroomgospel.org. Let us know your thoughts about today's program by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing how Table Talk touches your life. Be sure to pick up a copy of his book, Building Faith and Perfecting Character. Uh, one of my producers here said, you know what? That book is so relevant to what's going yeah, on in the world today. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you, Bishop Wooden. Thank you, ladies. We thank love you. you. Be encouraged today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today. Mm -hmm.